is on your right with Lantern Control. Brandon Blazak is on your left with Jun. We got 900 strong here this weekend at the heart of New York. That's Syracuse, New York. Brandon, I'm only going to five. Peter, looks like he's happy with his seven, and we are underway here in round number one. Thank you for joining us earlier this morning. Ingram, going to start things off with the Pixis of Pandemonium. And he's getting to work with it right away. Not going to waste any time. <laughs> for those unfamiliar, we're going to we're going to fire at the card image machine right away for the Pixis of Pandemonium. Card is a little weird. It, it is another copy of Ghoul Caller's Bell, but it does mill cards face down. Now here is an Inventor's Fair into the very powerful Lantern of Insight. Mox Obel for, for Peter, Thought Seize for Brandon. Those are the reveals on the top of the deck. And he's looking to get this engine going, Craig. Yeah, and, and Peter has a couple of options here. Thought Seize is generally pretty strong against the Lantern deck, but he knows his opponent might want to crack that fetch land. And I think Peter really wants this Mox Opal off the top of his deck. Looking for another land. It's a freebie, gives all the colors. All the colors, yeah, yeah. that's the key. Right now, he just has colorless lands. Up, oh, see, now you get to. This is your first experience with this, isn't it? What do you mean? That's, that's a. Uh, that's what? It's a land. That is correct. Which land is that? That's a maelstrom pulse. That can't come into play. What land you got there, Craig? Uh, that's uh, that's a land that he searched up with another land. That's correct. Yep, got it. Okay, you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> a bloodstained mire will be the draw here. Verdant catacombs, I believe. Search for a blood crypt, but it could be a stomping ground. <laughs> Aha! I'm on fire early this morning. <laughs> blood crypt, the expedition. Oh, the energy level is so high this morning. I love it. That's what happens when you go for a run, man. You turn the body right on. Yeah? Got a little run in this morning with you. And now I'm feeling good. Overgrown tomb, a little easier to, to, note, to note that that's an, an overgrown tomb. I'm used to that one. So Brandon's got... You know, all the colors of mana at this stage. Top cards of Verdant Catacombs. Let's see what his play is going to be. It'll be a Dark Confidant. Little card drawing engine here. And now we're going to go back Ingram's way. Ingram does want to draw this Mox Opal, so he'll draw that. Top card for him is a Glimmer Void. He'll play the Mox. He's got three artifacts, so Metalcraft is on. But does he have an answer for the Dark Confidant? Yeah, the Dark, dark Confidant is very strong in this matchup. Uh, it makes your opponent have to deny possibly two cards a turn instead of just one. Mm-hmm. And the Lantern Control deck isn't going to threaten anyone's life total anytime soon or ever. So, you know, the Jun deck's just getting free cards off of it. We take a look here at Brandon's hand here from the Thought Seas that Ingram's going to cast. You've got an Overgrown Tomb, a Terminate, a Lightning Bolt, and an Olivia Voldaren. So Brandon's content's not particularly good. You know, the Terminate's not going to play a role in things in this particular matchup outside of maybe killing Dark Confidant itself. <laughs> Olivia a little slow and not good against Ensnaring Bridge. Lightning Bolt can't go to the Dome, so Peter is at a theoretical 15 at the moment, Basi but he might just take the Lightning Bolt. Yeah, basically dead, right? Yeah, more or less, more yeah. or less dead. He will take the Lightning Bolt. We're going to head back over to Brandon. Verdant Catacombs will be the reveal. Liliana of the Veil will be the draw for the turn. Well, Peter says, not yet. Pixels of Pandemonium is going to prevent that. So Terminate will be the draw for the turn. The top, key now, top card here, excuse me, for Brandon is another copy of Thought Seize. Brandon's going to play a Verdant Catacombs. He'll attack with that Dark Confidant. Ingram's going to fall down to 16. It's a tie game. Yeah, and, you know, Brandon maybe is a small leader. He's got double Terminate, so he's got all the creatures <laughs> on, under lockdown for the rest of the game. Yeah, those are taken care of. <laughs> that is important. Got a Ghoul Caller's Bell on top of the deck here for Peter Ingram. Looks like he might be going to ensnaring bridge territory. There's also an Ancient Stirrings in Ingram's hand right now as well. One of the most powerful cards in the deck, but we do know that this particular deck, I think one could argue that ensnaring bridge is the most powerful card in this deck. Yeah, it's definitely up there on the list. Uh, I think it's the, the linchpin that keeps things together here. There's the bridge. You can see Ingram's hand again, another Mox Opal, an Ancient Stirrings. Top card of the deck is a Ghoul Caller's Bell. And it looks like he has an Inquisition of Kozlak in hand as well, so he might have some interest in playing another copy of Mox Opal and firing enough off another spell. Again, Mox Opal is legendary, so he'll lose the previous one. And again, he has an idea of the contents of Brandon's hand. Yes. Because of Lantern of Insight, because of the thoughts he's in the prior turn, he's going to see every card that he draws but he's still going to fire off this Inquisition of Kozilek. And this could be correct just to get his hand to be relatively empty. Yep. So he's going to take a Terminate. 
Obviously, Terminate not going to play a huge role in things, but it is one less card in Peter's hand. And now we're going to head back over to Brandon. Peter only with one card left in hand as Brandon's going to sacrifice a Verdant Catacomb. He's going to shuffle away a Thoughtseize, get himself a land. One thing to note as we take a look at Inventor's Fair, I believe Peter may have missed his trigger for that on the previous turn. Sure. Uh, because he took two from the Confident and then two from the Thoughtseize. We can't forget that if you control th up to, excuse me, three or more artifacts, which he does right now, he actually controls four, you gain a life. So uh, that life that you do gain from Inventor's Fair certainly can't end up mattering. Yeah, it, it seems small, but at the end of the game, when you need one more life, you're really regretting missing that trigger. Yep. So Ingram maybe should be at 17 right now. Dark Confidant's going to reveal a fatal push. Uh, Peter says you can definitely have that. And then uh, old Tarmogoyf, uh, Peter says you can have that too, because it can't attack. We'll have to see the top card of Brandon's deck here, and he'll reveal that. It's another copy of Dark Confidant. Right now, as I take a look at the deck list here for Jun, what exactly can a... Uh, can Brandon do to get out of this situation, Craig? I mean, there's got to be some number of Colgan's commands or Abrupt Decays. Yeah, we're looking at a couple of Abrupt Decays. Uh, we saw the Maelstrom Pulse kind of pop out of his deck earlier when he was shuffling, so th that's an answer. Uh, two Colgan's commands and potentially a Liliana Ultimate. Okay. But all of these things, you know, a Liliana Ultimate is not a clean answer by any means. Um, you know, to me, Peter is just one card away from kind of locking up this game. It feels that way. You know, he, he's only denying one card a turn. He just played a bell, so now he's up to two. But this, this, that might be the death knell for uh, his opponent here. If he can find another bell or even a pit and needle, pit and needle right now can shut off Liliana. Sure. So that's another avenue that's covered. One of the things about the Lantern Control deck, if you've never seen it be played before, is that once it kind of gets this set up, it's all about engineering to make sure that the opponent can never get out of this. Uh, and so right now he's played a Pit and Needle, take care of Liliana Ville. That was a card that you mentioned could be an out. Yep. That's off the table now. So now it is Ingram's job to make sure that Brandon never draws Colagon's Command or Abrupt Decay. Or Maelstrom Pulse. Or Maelstrom Pulse. Yep. So but that, is that five cards? Yes. Okay. Five cards, that's a very short list. Yep. And... Yeah, I, I mean, the Lantern deck is often just like a bow constrictor where it, it just gets a hold of the opponent and then slowly chokes him out and it gets worse and worse and worse as the game goes on. Well, Brandon did not want to be choked out anymore, so he's going to concede that game as Peter Ingram has got the lock in place with Lantern Control to kick off his day. He is 1-0 here in Syracuse as Lantern Control up a game here over Jund. We're going to go to the sideboards and we will start with Brandon Blazak, who's got two Collective Brutalities, two Nile Spell Bombs, two Kitchen Finks, two Ancient Grudge. Here come the fun ofs in Graft Digger's Cage, Pit the Needle, Liliana the Last Hope, Duress, Painful Truce, Slaughter Games, and a really good one there in Engineered Explosives. Yeah, I think Brandon has a lot of good options here. Uh, he has a whole bunch of cards that he wants to get out of his deck. So he's going to bring in a lot of these cards from the sideboard. Uh, I would expect to see the Nile Spell Bonds to deny the opponent's graveyard. Uh, I like Ancient Grudge, obviously. The Pithing Needle is fine. The Duress is good. The Painful Truce is an option. Slaughter Games and Engineer Explosives can both be played in this matchup. Like you said, the Engineer's Explosives is very good here. I mean, all that removal in Brandon's deck is just going to get out of here, yeah. right? Yeah, and even, even some of the clunkier cards, he's got a Huntmaster of the Fells, he's got an Olivia Voldaren. Those are cards that you do not want to be drawing in this matchup. Now, those can certainly go. So Brandon's got plenty to sideboard out and plenty to sideboard in. For Peter Ingram, he's got three Leyline of Sanctity, two Welding Jar, two Graft Trigger's Cage, two Nature's Claim. Here come his fun ofs in Gaddock Teague, Pithing Needle, Nile Spellbound, Surgical Extraction, a Ghost Quarter, and an Abrupt Decay. Yeah, this is an interesting matchup where Peter might want to bring in these Leyline of Sanctity. Just start it. In play, it, it protects him from all of the opponent's discard. Um, you know, it, it could be very strong in this matchup. Uh, Jund is obviously going to have tons of artifact removal. I would expect the Welding Jars to come in as kind of a safety net there. Uh, and then we'll see about some of these other cards. They're not super exciting to me, but potentially Abrupt Decay to deny an early attacker. Um, Ghost Quarter is not terrible. It can be okay. You know, it, it's just a question of uh, how much Peter feels he wants to change his main deck. Well, this is going to be kind of interesting because I, you know, we haven't seen Peter for basically a year. Yep. A little more than that. Um, obviously, when you're working in R&D, you are playing Magic all day. So, but you're not playing competitive Magic in a competitive setting. So I'm curious to see if there's uh, any rust here on a former SD Tour Open champion. He is currently up a game, though, so he's in a pretty good spot. 
Uh, while these players do sideboard up, Brandon Blazak will be on the play, Ingram on the draw. But we're going to talk about the StarCityGames.com weekly sale, everybody, where we're going to give you up to 33% off of wholesale lots here this weekend. Go to StarCityGames.com slash weekly sale. we got a new sale coming for you Monday at 11 a.m. East Coast time. But for now, up until Monday at 10.59 a.m., up to 33% off wholesale lots. Okay. Did you get me something nice? I didn't, but I'm hoping that your wife did. Well, come on. I'm I, I thought you would, you know, be feeling generous. You know my birthday's coming up. I did not know that. Yeah, February. It's right around the oh, corner. okay. Yeah. So I just right thought you might corner, want to okay. pick something up for me. Okay. I'll get you something off of next week's weekly sale. All right. That's I'm what in. I'll do. Because I already know what it is, and I think you're going to like it. Ooh. So I'll get you a little something nice off of that one. In the meantime, we're going to learn a little bit more about Peter Ingram. As I did mention, someone that we saw a lot on the SCD Tour last year before he headed over to Wizards of the Coast. 27-year-old from the New York area, so not far from here to come play. He's got four open top eights with one win in Indianapolis last year with Jeskai Control. When, uh, when Nahiri got released, Nahiri was searching up Emrakul, the Aeon's Torn, yep. uh, to kill the opponent. He's also got an invitational top eight on the resume as well. Name has been turned into its own language, courtesy of Ben Freeman and Alex Magelton. Uh That is actually accurate. He is a big Coheed and Cam Cambria fan, as am I. And he collects retro video games. The 27-year-old member of Team MetagameGurus.com. It's Peter Ingram. As we get ready to watch him play game number two here from New York in just a moment. Yeah, that's probably not annoying at all. No, not at all. Nothing. There's nothing annoying about Ben Friedman screaming Peter all the time. <laughs> Definitely not annoying. <laughs> Would never annoy anyone ever. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. I had the pleasure of playing against 40 card Friedman at the Pro Tour. How'd that go? I got the best of him. Nice. That's tough. Did he have the hat? No. I hey, kept it. Uh, kept it pretty serious at the Pro Tour, huh? I guess so. Didn't bring the casual cowboy hat. The game face, but he was a uh, consummate professional yeah. throughout our match. I Absolutely. enjoyed playing him. 40-card Friedman can play some magic, man. We Let's were playing the 60-card version. Uh, he's even better at that. Sure. Uh, Brandon going to take a mulligan here. Let's see if Peter wants to keep his seven. 900 strong here in Syracuse. Main event has sold out. These players love themselves some modern. Magic's most popular format strikes again. Dude, modern's great. Modern is great. There's tons of decks that you can play. Just put in the time, people. Yeah. Games are interactive. Games are fun. You can play lots of different strategies, lots of different archetypes. Put in the time. Figure out what to do in each matchup. We'll keep a tally of different kind of decks and archetypes that we see this weekend. I know it'll be a pretty deep one because we do just see so many different decks in the format. Obviously, Death Shadow is probably going to be public enemy number one. That or Eldrazi Tron. But we see Jund here, an old school Reed Duke-esque approach. And we see Lantern Control in homage to Adrian Sullivan. Here from Peter Ingram. Remember, Adrian Sullivan did top eight our Invitational to close out season one in Roanoke, Virginia last month. Actually, wow, it was in June, more than a month ago. Time flying since we're in August now. Yeah. Yeah, time flying. Uh, but Adrian did top eight there before being knocked out by Daniel Fournier and his Death Shadow deck. How's that August already? How'd that happen? <laughs> no one asked me. How'd that happen? Yeah. Did I even do anything in July? I don't even know. I, I had that fun on 4th of July. I think that's about it, though. Man, last month went by fast. That's terrifying. Did we cover any shows last month? I think we had July off. Yeah, we, we, we did. Had July off, yeah. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're doing it up strong this month. Uh-oh, we got an Inquisition of Kozlak. Two Mox Opals, Codex Shredder, Pixis of Pandemonium, Blooming Marsh... Ancient stirrings. Let's make it two blooming marshes. It looks like there for Peter Ingram. I think I want to take ancient stirrings. Yeah, a ancient stirrings is one of the better cards in this deck. It just it looks at so many cards. Because I'm always just so concerned if I'm playing against lantern control or with lantern control about ensnaring bridge, and that's one way to find it. Looks like he's going to end up taking the Pixis of Pandemonium, maybe cut him off of the mill effects. Leyline of Sanctity, nice draw. Right on time. Yeah, that's <laughs> really good. Although, a couple turns, he can just deploy that with his double mox hand. That's actually true. That's actually true. Going to head back over to Brandon. He's going to fire off a pivoting needle. All right, let's see what this is going to name. We'll take a look at Pithy Needle really quickly, too, because there is this fun little game between Pithy Needle and Phyrexian Revoker. Oh, man, I always get them wrong. Yeah, where Pithy Needle 
can uh, cannot stop mana abilities if memory serves. That is correct, unless they're mana abilities. So therefore, he's not going to name Mox Opal. If it was Frex and Revoker, perhaps he would name Mox Opal. But since it's not, he's going to name Codex Shredder. And that card has been neutralized for the moment. Yeah, you know what's not good here for Pete? What's that? A second Codex Shredder. <laughs> yeah, not the best draw step. That's what he picked up for the turn. For now, he's going to play himself a little Ancient Stirrings and get himself a Glimmer Void. Now, one thing I do want to note, that in response to that Pivot Needle, Pete did activate a Codex Shredder targeting himself. That's why you see a Surgical Extraction in the graveyard. He'll play another Codex Shredder and simply pass the turn back as we go back over to Brandon. Brandon on the hunt for a second land here. Doesn't look like he's found one, so we go back over to Peter. Peter will draw. He will play that Leyline Sanctity. Maybe it wasn't that bad of a draw step after all. Yeah, it's pretty good here. Back to Ingram, we're going to go. He's picked up a Thoughtseize. He'll play a Thoughtseize. Can't target himself. So let's go this way. A Tarmogoyf, a Col Colgon's Command, a Dark Confidant. I think that's a Terminate? Looks like a Terminate. A little surprised to still see that in after sideboard. A second Colgon's Command and a Liliana the Veil, but uh, unfortunately here for Brandon, no manas. Yeah, we might see Pete go after this Dark Confidant just because Brandon is so far away from, uh, you know, casting the three mana spells. I think I might have some interest in Bobby, yeah. Bobby's going to bite the dust. Obviously a little scared of those Colgon's commands there. That's a pretty good card, but... Yes. Just another spell drawn there for Brandon as we head back over to Ingram. Ingram will play a Glimmer Void past the turn back, so he doesn't have much going on either. There's a land. There's a Tarmogoyf. And there's not even an Ensnaring Bridge on the battlefield here for Peter Ingram, so he needs to get going here a little bit. Ancient Stirring's a timely draw step, however. That's a good one. And with the Tarmogoyf on the board, mm -hmm. we can fire up. What's that? Our Tarmo die. Yep, well done. Well done. Available at SCG.com. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Your favorite accessory. <laughs> Let's see what Peter wants to take here off of the Ancient Stirrings. He's going to go with an Academy Ruins. Interesting. Pass the turn back. Brandon, I believe, has drawn a third land. Now, I don't know if it taps for red mana to turn on Kolagon's command. You see the Ghost Quarter was his second land. And it looks like it may have been a Black Cleave Cliffs. And this is one of those games where you, you, Brandon has just kind of stumbled on lands, hasn't done much. Pete's had all the time in the world to do what he wants to do. But the Lantern deck does have a higher fail rate than a lot of decks. Mm -hmm. He's got his Coda Shredder, but he doesn't have a Lantern. His Coda Shredder... Codex Shredders are turned off. He doesn't have a bridge to hide behind. Yep. And so he's not really doing very much at the moment. Pete's going to put an artifact on top of his deck with Academy Ruins to shrink the Tarmogoyf a little bit. That's a Pixis of Pandemonium. Now he's going to draw the Pixis of Pandemonium. He'll cast it. He'll play a Spire of Industry and simply pass the turn back. So Brandon's going to untap and draw. He's picked up a stomping ground. Lands are not much of a problem anymore for our Jun player. And I like Brandon being patient with the Cole against Command there. There's, there's nothing really threatening on this board, so no, no reason to play it. Here's a Liliana the Veil. He's going to plus it. Both players are going to discard. Mox Opal, terminate down. Tarmo goes up to a 5-6, and in for 5 comes Brandon. Yeah, that Goyf is a quick clock. Yep. Peter is going to mill each of them. Don't get to see that card, of course. Now he'll draw a card. He'll play an Inventor's Fair, which is fine. It's good, but not great. Yeah. He can search up an artifact that he wants. He can get that artifact back with the Academy Ruins once it get des gets destroyed. But, you know, his opponent has two Colgon's Command. He has to worry about the Liliana. He has to just not die to this Tarmogoyf. And I believe Brandon has a uh, Ghost Quarter sitting in his lands over there as well. He does. So you know, I, I think it's just too much for, for Peter at this point. Peter's going to sacrifice the Inventor's Fair right now. 
And I think he's going to be on the hunt for an ensnaring bridge. Remember, Adventure's Fair has got all that text, but one of them is four tap and sacrifices. Search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library, but you can only activate that ability if you control three more artifacts, which he does at the moment. He actually controls four. He's going to get an ensnaring bridge, play an ensnaring bridge, but as we know, just like Peter knows, uh, that's not going to be there long. Yeah, multiple Culligan's commands on the other side. So we head over to Brandon, and he'll draw a card. Olivia Voldaren, I believe, was the draw. A little surprised to see that one in his deck after sideboard as well. Well, it's, it's very possible he's just not familiar with this matchup. Uh, the Landron deck is a deck that has been around in Modern for a while, but it's certainly not coming out in droves. We don't see, you know, 10 of this deck in day two. That's for sure. That's for sure. Kolagon's command is going to blow up in Snaring Bridge. Tarmogoy's going to grow a little bit. Actually, it'll stay as a 5-6. Pardon me, because there's already an artifact in the graveyard. So now we head back over to Ingram. Yeah, and putting a bridge on top is not an option here because you know that your opponent has another copy of Kolagon's command. So what's this? All right, so he's drawn... Ooh. Whatever he wants. Yeah, he's drawn Infernal Tutor. Now, it's possible he has an Abrupt Decay in his deck for this Tarmogoyf. Yeah, he there just it is. searched up an Abrupt Decay. But he's still staring down the business end of this Liliana. Yeah. Inferno Tutor, while Hellbent means that you get to search for any card, is essentially Demonic Tutor at that point. So he's searched for a card. Don't have to reveal it. Yeah, I always feel awkward when I search with Infernal Tutor. I always feel like I have to show my opponent the card. Yeah. Because there's very few cards that let you just tutor for two mana where you don't have to reveal what you're searching for. Draw here for Brandon. Didn't get a great look at it, but he's got a couple of cards in hand. Most importantly, again, is that second copy of Kolagon's Command. Looks like Olivia and Dark Confidant as well. Liliana's going to go up to six. Abrupt Decay is going to take care of Tarmogoyf. Brandon will still have to discard. He's going to discard Dark Confidant. Now he'll play Olivia Voldaren. Vampires. Can't, <laughs> can't abrupt decay that one. <laughs> Pete giving the head a good scratch. Yeah. What do I do here? Uh, that's a good question, Pete. Pete's going to take a look at Olivia Voldaren. We'll do the same. Four mana, three, three flyer. Great in attrition matchups if the opponent does not have an answer. Now you can deal one damage to target creature, another target creature. So what? What Brandon cannot do is have Olivia shoot herself to grow it. Sure. That's not an option here. So Peter just puts Academy, uses Academy Runes to put Ensnaring Bridge back on top, recast Ensnaring Bridge, cross the fingers, hope that maybe Brandon makes some sort of error here. Because I think he just had his out right now is his opponent making a mistake or not being familiar with the matchup. Sure, definitely. Uh I think even through a potential stumble or two, Brandon has enough pieces still to try to close out this game. The Liliana is sitting on ultimate. Oh, that's an issue. Okay, he's just going to pass here. He didn't use Liliana and didn't cast Colgan's command. Okay. My mistake. Can't ultimate. Oh, can't target the opponent. Yeah, of course. because of white ley line. Yeah, okay. I'm. Yeah, both okay. are mistakes. That's there. fine. Can plus, but okay. So if he can't do that, I'm surprised he didn't plus. So I'm curious what's going on in Brandon's hand. Well, his opponent is empty-handed, so there's there's not really much value in plusing. Okay. You know, if he says, maybe I need both of these cards at some point this game. Oh, this is risky. If Peter draws a discard spell, he can take the Kolagon's command. A Pixis of Pandemonium activation. If he draws an Inquisition or Thoughtseize, life's going to be pretty good. He drew another bridge, which is pretty good. That's actually a great draw yeah. for him. Yeah, and, and Brandon's thinking, I just need to get through this one turn. I'm going to call against command that bridge and attack for lethal. And Pete draws another bridge right off the top. Yeah. Let's see what the reveal is. Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't target him with that. And now he picked up a copy of Terminate. Again, that's a third Terminate after sideboard. 
That's just a fundamental misunderstanding of the matchup, unfortunately, for Brandon. It's clear he hasn't played against this deck very much at all. Because Lantern Control is creatureless. Sure. Big zero in the creature pile. Brandon's very close to crossing the finish line here, though. He, he might get an opportunity to get those cards out of his deck for a game three. Yeah. Another Pixis of Pandemonium activation. Ingram going to play a Ghost Quarter. The Slave Line is coming up pretty big here for Peter. Dark Confidant will reveal Swamp and now draw a card, Will Brandon. Now again, he does have some good cards to get himself out of the situation. Of them, Maelstrom Pulse can kill the Ley Line, can also kill two bridges. He'll plus Liliana, discard a Liliana, pass the turn back. Another Pixis activation. And now Ingram will untap. Draw yet again. Play another Ghost Quarter, just pass the turn back. Dark Confidant will reveal an abrupt decay. And that, I believe, should do it, Craig? Yeah, if he, if he has the right mana to cast both these spells, which I believe he does, and he drew a fetch land, so I, I can't imagine he won't be able to cast both here. Should be able to just win. Colgon command, Colgon's command to one bridge, abrupt decay the other. Ingram is empty handed. Don't think there's any punishment for doing this. Yeah, kill that, deal two damage there. Those are the modes it'll select. Ingrams have some sort of wonky thing he can do here. Well, he, he can roll the dice on this Pixis, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, we never see this come up. Let's take a look at Pixis again. All right. Seven tap sacrifice. Each player turns face up. All cards he or she owns exiled with Pixis of Pandemonium, then puts all permanent cards among them onto the battlefield. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this could actually be a thing. Could. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. And a welding jar? What happens with the other ones? Oh, they probably stay exiled. Do they probably stay exiled, right? Like, they don't go, like, Grudge doesn't go to the graveyard. Oh my gosh. And so now he's going to. Unbelievable. He's going to welding jar the bridge that was targeted by Colgon's command. Now there are three bridges on the battlefield. Yep, that's that's all the bridges. That's all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's just spin the wheel. OK, Cedric. yeah, Pixis comes up a lot. Spin the wheel. OK. <laughs> so three bridges then. And now Pete's got Academy Ruins. And he might just think that getting a fourth bridge might be a better draw. Actually, so if I'm Peter, I think I just want to put Jar on Welding top. Jar. Yeah. A little insurance policy against Maelstrom Pulse. Maelstrom Pulse, Pulse yeah. I think I just want to put the old jar on top. Let's see what he's going to choose. Yep, he's going to just get welding jar, put it on top, pass the turn back. And, uh, and now Brendan is a long way from oh crossing yeah. the finish line. Oh, yeah. Dark Confidant's going to reveal another Dark Confidant. Brandon's going to take two. He's going to fall down to 12. Black Cleave Cliffs. In hand, Wooded Foothills is the land for the turn. Ingram's going to untap. Does he want to Academy Ruins again? He will not. He'll play an Inquisition. Dark Confidant, Lightning Bolt, and a Black Cleave Cliffs. I guess we take Bobby. He's pretty safe against Lightning Bolt at this stage. Yeah, there's, there's something to be said for taking the Bolt. Uh, it denies Brandon from killing his own Dark Confidant with it later in the game. Okay. But that probably doesn't matter in this game. What Pete ideally wants is just like a, a ghoul caller's bell, an effect that mills himself. And so that then he'll have access to even more cards when he has, you know, the, the graveyard working for him as well as his library. Yeah, I guess the only thing, you know, is wh which way, how does Peter lose this game now? Here's a Liliana of the Veil. And I guess one of the ways is if Maelstrom Pulse shows up to kill Leyline. Yep. And then double bolt. Yeah, Something like that? The, well, the Liliana activation would be big after that. True, true. So I guess if Leyline ever leaves, it's just going to be a problem anyway. 
Let's take a reveal here. Bloodstain Meyer from Dark Confidant. Play that Bloodstain Meyer. Pass the turn back over to Ingram, who will draw. He's drawn a Glimmer Void. He'll play that and pass the turn back. Brandon's going to sacrifice a land. A little risky to me. Now, he can kill the Dark Confidant anytime with Lightning Bolt or Olivia Voldaren. Yep. So he can control Dark Confidant. I don't love going. Eh, I mean, I guess going down to seven finger deck out of land isn't the end of the world. You do want to try to find what you're looking for here. Reveal, bolt down to six. Inquisition, the draw, pass. Ingram. Man, how often do we get to see a Pixis zero. activated for seven? Approximately zero times. At least one time. Okay, one time. This is the <laughs> first. This is legitimately the first time I've ever seen it. Hey, Lantern. There we go. Inquisition on top. Now remember those Codex Shredders that are a little off the screen? That's what Brandon Blazak's Pith Needle is naming, so Peter doesn't have the uh, the engine all the way going yet. Thought Seize will be the draw for the turn. Yep, Peter just had to reel his top card, which is another copy of Lantern of Insight. Scavenging Ooze is... Annoying, but not actually all that good right now. Well, it, it does allow Brandon to keep the Dark Confidant going longer. True. You know, it's just a source of life gain. Uh, denying Pete's graveyard is good. Ingram, on the end of Brandon's turn, put a Pixis back on top. Now he's going to cast it. Now he's got the Lantern plus Mill effect on the battlefield. So he can control... Brandon's draw step a little bit here as both players are at four life, it appears. <laughs> They're both at four. Yeah. Could go either way. I'm feeling reveal slaughter games. Tarmogoyf, okay. You're at two. Scavenging news, can I draw that? Ingram says yes. Okay. Sure. Tarmogoyf's the next draw. There's a scavenging ooze. Pass the turn back. That's a way for Brandon to gain some life. Ingram will draw another copy of Lantern of Insight. Top card is a Blooming Marsh. Second Lantern to go along with the Pixis. Brandon's going to remove some creatures here, it appears, with old scavenging ooze. Peter going to count how many green sources do you have. So it looks like Brandon's going to be able to remove four creatures in the graveyard, which means it can gain four life. Put four counters on the ooze. Dark Confidant revealed Tarmogoyf. So up to six, down to four. Abrupt Decay, can I draw that? Even that card is probably fine. Well, maybe. We'll see. This is a little risky. If it's Maelstrom Pulse, it's, uh, it's Bad News Bear. It's Grudge. That's so close. Yeah. It's close to being a good card. Well, you're going to sacrifice a Lantern. That means that Brandon's going to have to shuffle. Peter Ingram trying to hold on here. I think he's in a really good spot. All right, Verdant Catacombs, you can have that. I don't care about that. That's your draw step. Top card, Wooded Foothills. You can have that too. He'll play a land, which is Verdant Catacombs, which does shuffle. So that matters. There's Tarmogoyf. Pass. Ingram. Gun Academy ruins up a Lantern of Insight. Lantern, play it. Pass the turn back. All right. Yeah, I'm a little surprised Brandon hasn't uh, denied the Academy ruins at some point this game. Just ghost quartering it? Yeah. yeah. And he also had the option of, of eating the Lantern with his ooze. That's also true. That's also true. Pixis is going to turn over some cards here. I see another Pixis and I see a Thought Seize. Pixis will be the play there from Ingram. Pass the turn back. Brandon's going to untap those lands. He'll reveal to Dark Confidant. Thought Seize is going to fall down to three. Top card now is a grudge. Peter says, uh uh. Gone forever. Gone forever it is via the Pixis. Next card is Verdant Catacombs. Absolutely, you can have that. Next one is Engineer Explosives, huh? Pith Needle on top of Ingram. Well, maybe you can have that now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I don't care about that anymore. No, gone forever. All right, gone forever it is. Mox Opal Maelstrom Pulse. Discard a Thoughtseize. 
Ingram will draw the mox. Top card is a welding jar. He will play the mox, discard it more or less. Picks this activation, and that is going to do it. Peter Ingram is going to win this match over Brandon Blazak. Two games to zero. The sleeper hold has been accomplished as wow. Lantern Control puts Jund to sleep. Ingram